good. The good news we are bringing to you is that your sins can be forgiven through Jesus. God doesn't want to destroy you. That is why Jesus became man. Jesus became man so that through him, our sins will be forgiven. John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, he said, This is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This is the Lamb of God. God gave us a pure sacrifice. Jesus is the only one who can go to the grave, can enter into the grave and come back. He's the only one who can wrestle with sin and defeat sin. And he has given us authority over sin. Only if you give your life to Jesus, you have power over sin. Nobody has power over sin. Jesus conquered sin. And he has given everybody. God has made provision for our salvation. And it is through Jesus, not any prophet. Jesus became man to deal with sin. The first time he came, he came purposely to deal with sin. And to destroy the power of the grave. And he rose up again from the grave. The second time he's coming, he's, not, he's coming to judge the world. Jesus will come and judge the world. And the rulers of the world, they will run for cover. Jesus came to save you. Do you want to be saved? Now he's saving you, you don't want to be saved. He will be your judge. You will stand before him and you will say, get away from me. I gave you how many years? I came 2,000 plus years. My people preach me. Preachers preach me. Pastors preach me. You refuse. You were stubborn. Get away from me. I don't know you. You said, but we had a religion. Our religion taught us you are prophet. Yeah, but the Christians also told you that I am not a prophet. Why didn't you believe them? Why didn't you believe them? You chose a lie. When Satan said, the Satan said to God, the serpent deceived me. God punished him for listening to the serpent. God didn't say, oh, because the serpent deceived you, because the devil deceived you, so I'll forgive you. No, God punish her. God punish the devil. God will punish you if you die in your sins. There will be no excuse. There will be no excuse. You will say, oh, but the politicians told us we can live the way we... The politicians are not in charge of your life. The politicians don't call the shots. They themselves will stand before God. God will judge all of them. God will judge all of them. The politicians who are giving you license to practice abomination. Pride goes before destruction. The word of God has said plainly in the book of Proverbs. Pride goes before destruction. Pride turns a beautiful angel called Lucifer into a devil. Pride. Pride turns a, a beautiful angel into a devil. What are you talking about? The grace of God. People in Bahi, the grace of God that brings salvation is right here. We are warning you. We are warning you. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to everybody. God lost the whole world. He has declared war on sin. God has declared war on sin. God will only destroy sin. And as long as you are a sinner, you will be destroyed. Believe me, God will destroy sin, not you. But as long as you are holding on to sin, you will go down with sin. When Jesus became sin on the cross, he died. Some people said, if he's God, why is he asking, my, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yes, when he became sin, he died. God is not partial. Sin killed Jesus. And if sin killed Jesus, who are we? Sin killed Jesus on the cross. It was our sins. When it became sin for us, sin killed Jesus. But he had power to recover from sin. What about you? Do you have power to recover from sin? The grace of God that brings salvation. We can tell you God loves you. You have heard hundred times, thousand times that God loves you. You are taking the love. Now we'll tell you about the judgment of God. Bible says, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. But God said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will rebuke the world of sin and of judgment. 
So we will tell you that God is a loving God, but he's a judge. Today, he's not judging you. Today, he's giving you the hope to be saved. But someday, he will judge you. We love you. You will live forever. Hello? You will live forever. Every one of us will live forever. Let it go into your head. Everybody will live forever. You have beginning, but you don't have an end. When you walk out of your body, it's not over. Bible said all of us will be judged according to the things we did when we were in the flesh. God will judge us according to the things we did when we were living in the body on the earth. After you have left the earth, you have left your body, you will be judged. That's scary, but that's the truth of the gospel. You will be judged. All of us will stand before God. And we will be judged according to the things we did while we were in the flesh. God loves you. The only thing God hates is sin. 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 God demonstrated his love for us. When we were yet sinners, Christ died. Jesus has died for your sins. So if you continue to live, you are wicked. If you continue to live in sin and you die in your sin, it's your fault. Because Jesus already made a provision for you to come out of sin. It's just like you are drowning and someone has come to save you. Has brought a life boat and a life jacket and has thrown it to you. Take it. And you refuse to take it and you drown. It is your fault. Through the gospel, God is giving you a lifeline to be saved. God wants to save you. God doesn't want any... It's not God's desire that anybody should perish. But we believe a lie. If you live without Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, and you die in your sins, your sins will condemn you. Don't be religious. You see the religious people? People say they should be kicked out of parliament because they don't know their use. They are saying the religious people should be kicked out of parliament because they are turned into this world, hey, this nation into a secular world, there is nothing Christian about this world and they cannot even serve Christianity in the nation. So there is no need for them to be in parliament. I agree with that. They are just wearing their big clothes. They can't speak for God. They can't preach against sin. You have the opinion on sin and they keep their mouths quiet so that they can stay there and still get paid. No. We will tell you, God has declared war on sin. If you live in sin, sin will destroy you. God has made provision. Through Jesus. Salvation is through Jesus. This is why Jesus came. The punishment for sin is too much for us to bear. We cannot bear the penalty of sin. No human can bear the penalty of sin. That's why Jesus became man. He came all the way from heaven. Came and died so that we will escape eternal destruction. And 2,000 plus years old, you are still living in your sin. How wicked can we be? How wicked can we be? After the greatest gift God has given us, salvation. You will live forever, whether you like it or not. If you live this life, you will continue to live on. But if Jesus is not your Lord and personal Savior, you will spend eternity away from God. It's not a comfortable place. Shake your head. When you are bending down there, you will remember my voice. Recently, a young man who hears me preach over here all the time, he passes by, he hears me preach all the time. He doesn't give any, he doesn't even listen, he passes. He said he, he traveled outside this country, he felt ill, he thought he would die. And whilst he was lying in the hospital, he remembered every preaching he has heard me preach. And he was telling God, please give me a chance, let me go and meet that preacher at parking again. No. <laughs> Today that you are hearing the preaching, this is where you have to give your life to Jesus. Listen, it is better for Jesus to be in your life. Your life will be far better, 100 times better than it is now. Your life is better in God than what you are living now. If Jesus is not your, in your life, I'm telling you what you are missing. It's like you are eating the garbage. You are eating the garbage. You don't even know. You are eating the garbage. If Jesus is not in your life, you are eating the garbage. When Jesus comes into your life, your eyes will open and you ask yourself, what, 
where am I being all this life? Life without Jesus is like pigs eating in a garbage. Do you see that? Do you see? Those who have known Jesus, do you see their lifestyle? A life without Jesus is like you are eating from the garbage. Blind. You are blind. Even though you have eyes, you are blind. And I will prove to you why I say you are blind. If you are not blind, you wouldn't take your money to buy a secret. If you are not blind, you wouldn't take your money to buy a secret. Because on the secret boss, I see, he says he will give you cancer. They have ugly pictures. Who in his right sense, if you are not blind, who in his right sense will take his money and buy tobacco and smoke? Come on. When Jesus comes to your life, that thing will leave your brain. It will vanish and you begin you see the tobacco and you say, So I used to smoke this. I used to smoke this. <laughs> Jesus is light. When Jesus comes to a place, darkness disappears. Without Jesus, your life is in a mess. And you know it. Where are the drunkard? Where are the prostitute? Where are the alcoholic? Go and ask. You living without Jesus, look at your life. How on earth would you take your money to even buy alcohol and drink? Something that destroys your medulla oblongata. You know what is on medulla That which controls your movement. And you take your money, you buy something, and then you are all over the place. You pee on yourself, you vomit in yourself. Wow. Wow. We love you. We have to tell you the truth as it is. Without Jesus, you have no life. We can tell you about the love of God all we want to. You are taking the love of God for granted. But the other side is that God has declared war on sin. Sin would destroy you. We die because of sin. We age because of sin. We are wearing glasses because of sin. We are using crutches because of sin. We are taking medications because of sin. God never intended any one of us to be ill. God never intended any one of us to grow old. God never intended anybody to wear glasses. God never intended us to corrode and grow old and grow wrinkles. God never, God never, God never created us to die. Sin. We yielded to sin. Sin is the reason why it's destroying us. But if you turn to Jesus, you will get life. In him is life. Jesus gives life. Taste and see that God is good. When you come to Jesus, listen. Cripples, cripples came to Jesus. He restored them. Up to today, medicine has no cure for leprosy. But Jesus restored lepers. He will restore you. He will restore you, madam. You said drunkard. Jesus will restore you. You said perfect. It doesn't matter how many men have used you, even though you were a man. It doesn't matter how many women have used you, even though you were a woman. Jesus can restore you. He makes all things perfect. He made a madman to become a missionary. He would turn your life around. He took a prostitute, turned her around, and she became somebody's wife, and she became a mother. Only Jesus can do that. He doesn't tell his followers to kill in business or in fiddles. We love you. Jesus wants to give somebody a new beginning in battle. Come to Jesus. Stop believing a lie. God says, God doesn't destroy. Sin destroys. God saves life. He doesn't say, you see, God has sent us over here to come and preach to you. He didn't tell us to go and kill the unbelievers. God didn't say, go and kill unbelievers. The devil does that. The devil is a murderer. He sends his people to go and kill unbelievers. And if he does, only the devil does that. God doesn't do that. God says, he has sent us over here. He wants to save you. Hello? Turn to God and live. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way out of this life. We have all sinned. And sin will destroy all of us. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Only through Jesus you can see God. Now, some of you, your religion promises you virgins to marry. What about the women? How many husbands, virgins will God give them? God does it. In the kingdom of God, there is no marriage. Any religion that promises you virgins to marry is of the devil. You come to think of it. Of all the things God can promise you, virgins. 
What the nonsense. Of all that God can promise you, virgins to marry, your waistline, abomination. <laughs> I don't want that kind of thing. In the afterlife, there is no marriage. So anyone who promises you virgin is a liar and the devil. The devil deceives. There is no marriage. Marriage is only for here. That's why the devil hates marriage and destroying marriage and perverting the human race. God loves you. God loves you. Don't die without Jesus. Every one of us needs Jesus. Without Jesus, you will live forever with Satan. And you will be punished because Satan is already condemned. He wants to go with you. Don't go with him. The devil is already condemned. He has been sentenced to lake of fire. There is no return. But he hates you so much, he wants to go with you. So he's making you do things that would displease God. So that God will sentence you with him. Do you know the devil? You are number one enemy. The devil hates you. God loves you. But if you are not, if you are not giving your life to Jesus, you are property of the devil. Is this harsh? Anyone who has given has not given their life to Jesus, they are Satan's children. Jesus said, You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of the devil you do. Anyone. Who has not given their life to Jesus? You are a property of Satan. Satan owns your life. Anybody, any man, any woman, it doesn't matter who you are. Jesus said, go and tell Herod, a whole ruler. He said, go and tell that fox that I'm preaching and I'll preach. He called Herod fox. He has no respect for any human because every human is below him. He told Pilate, you have no power over me. And Pilate washed his hands. What choice are you making? Have you washed your hands of Jesus? It will cost you. <laughs> it will cost you. You are making a choice. Every one of you. Pilate washed his hands. He cannot wash his sin. Hello? If Jesus is not your personal savior, I'm bored to tell you that you are property of the devil. He's your savior. Wonderful. <laughs> If Jesus is not, people in back, listen and listen good. If Jesus is not your Lord and personal Savior, you are Satan's property. And he will destroy you. Satan has chains around your neck. He has a chains around, he's waiting for you to die. And he will show you his ugly side. Look at what he's doing to you in this life already. Look at what he's already doing to you. Behind your drugs is Satan. Behind your drugs, behind your perversion is Satan. Behind that sickness, the devil oppresses. The word of God says, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifested to destroy the works of the devil. When we are preaching, we destroy Satan's works. We are not against you. We tell you, we destroy Satan's work. That's our way. The Son of God was made manifested to destroy the works of the devil. For the devil oppresses. The devil oppresses. Behind your pain is the devil. That man broke your heart. That woman broke your heart because of the devil. The devil wants to destroy you by all means. Come to Jesus. There is only freedom in Jesus. He said, I don't condemn you. But go and sin no more. Sin is our problem. Sin is the problem of the human race. Sin. Somebody, don't go home without giving your life to Jesus. Don't go home if I were you. Because you will live forever. Everybody will live forever. You listening to me, you will live forever. Whether you like it or not. But it's either you live forever with God or you live forever with the devil. And if you are living in this life without God, already your destination. If you are not living for God, you are already living for the devil. So by the time you breathe your life breath, you go where the devil is. And devil is already condemned. Satan is condemned. There is no hope for him. So if you are living for the devil, you... Go ahead and live for him. We love you. We don't hate you. We are the ones you should listen to. Not those politicians. And don't celebrate pride. Pride made a beautiful angel a devil. Pride. Look at those who celebrate pride. What is doing to them? Have you seen them? Have you seen them? Have you gone to those parades? Pride goes before destruction. Pride turned a beautiful angel into a devil. It will turn you into a monster. Pride. Pride. 
will turn you into a monster. You will call yourself names when God doesn't recognize that name. Hello? We, do you love the preacher? Say, I love the preacher. I love the preacher. Yeah, I love the preacher. We're telling you the truth. Nobody will tell you. If you are living and Jesus is not your Lord and personal Savior, you are property of the devil. Jesus looked at the religious people. He said, you are the devil's children. You are the devil's children. They were religious. They prayed three times. They washed their hands. They washed the pole certain way. They walked certain ways. But Jesus called them devil. If Jesus is not your Lord and personal Savior, you are property of the devil. Shake it off. And if you die without Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you will be sentenced with the devil. Listen. The punishment God has for Satan, you don't want to know. I love you. I'm not me. I'm telling you the truth. God loves you. He has declared war on sin. Not you. Madam, God has declared war on sin. Come to Jesus. He will take